Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fixing Garage. It is one week from Christmas Eve and I have a couple cars that I need to get worked on. Uh, I showed you the Ford Escape when we did the ignition cylinder or maybe that video is coming after this one or before, I don't know. I still have it here because I was waiting to fix the ABS. So it's giving an ABS code and I'm gonna show you with the scanner what it is and, and what it's telling us. And generally, you know, everybody always wants to throw sensors at these because that's what you think they are, but you should always check the tone rings first because that is also a problem on them, you know, whether it's in the hub or there's an actual ring. So I'm gonna dive into it on this 2011, show you how everything's done. I think it's 2011. And uh, I'll show you how I did a quick visual inspection to verify what the problem was and how we're gonna fix it. So let's get into it. Hey guys, we are in the car. I had the scanner hooked up and I wanted to give you the actual code that we're getting. It is C1236-20. And hopefully you can somewhat read it. It says left rear wheel, left rear wheel speed sensor input signal missing. So it's not getting any input from that side. Um, that can mean a few things. Maybe the sensor's bad, there's a wire cut somewhere, the tone ring is damaged. So we're gonna go back there and actually do a phys uh, you know, physical inspection of this to take a look, see if we can find any problems. I've already done this, but I want to show you what you should do before you go and just buy a sensor or buy any parts. You should definitely take a look at it. And then, um, I don't believe this scan tool can do it, but other ones, if you have better ones, you can actually like put the car up in the air, spin the wheel, and you can see if it's getting a signal. And that often will help you see if it's missing a few teeth or something. But let's do a physical uh, inspection of this and see what we got. All right, guys, I jacked the car up and sported with the jack stand just so we're clear. And now I'm going to take a look at our sensor and where that's at. So if you look over here, we can see our sensor. And you might say, okay, everything looks okay, right? Nothing's wrong here. This is able to spin. Everything looks good there. But uh, let's go look at the other side. Oh, well, you see how this side has those, uh, like, turn ring and the keys, little notches. Well, that's what it's supposed to look like. But if you look over here... It's completely gone, so it must have thrown it. Um, so unfortunately, you have to replace that whole metal like washer piece, and it you know pulls off from the hub. It's not a lot of work, from what I can see from the uh, service bulletin, but uh, just a physical inspection, you can see it's missing all of those tone rings, or the tone rings. So when this spins, it's no longer giving any input to that to the sensor. The sensor's probably fine; it just cannot read that. So. Let me show you the new part. I'll put the part number in the description and, and whatnot. I can only find it from Ford, so um, if Dorman makes one, I couldn't find it. And the Ford one was actually kind of difficult to get. I ordered it. It took two weeks. Guy told me they did it out of stock. Had to find another place. And then I found a dealership that had it sitting on a shelf from a job they apparently didn't need it for. So a little difficult to get, but it's the only fix I found. But if someone does find a Dorman part or some other one, leave in the description. But this seems like a really, you know, a big one-off. And Something to mention here is this is a front wheel drive car. If this was all wheel drive, it'd be different back here. There'd be a CV axle. So, you know, that might be the determining factor. So I'll probably have to set the car back down with the tire so that I can get this part off. Otherwise, it's probably gonna spin on me. So let's uh, let's go look at the new part and then we'll start working on getting this off. This is a 32 millimeter uh, nut on there, by the way. So let's go look at the part. All right, guys, before you start the job, um, again, this is assuming that you're having the same problem I am and you need to change the uh, rear tone wing ring like hub wheel in the back for a Ford Escape that has front wheel drive. Not our wheel drive, it's the only front wheel drive. Uh, just to break it loose, you will need your 32 millimeter socket as well as either a breaker bar or I strongly suggest having an impact. Uh, you may need an extension as well for your half inch, all right? And then once you have it off, again, the impact works great, 32 millimeter socket. When you're installing this, you're gonna need an, a torque wrench that can do you know, around 200 to 250 foot pounds. This calls for 214 foot pounds when I looked at the information. So you wanna make sure you have one that can do that. Uh, many of the 3.8s only do up to like 125. So if you don't have one of these, I bought this on Amazon, it was uh, 55 bucks. I see them go down as far as $45 for this one. Uh, it's Lexavon. I may put a link in the description, but it's it's cheap. It does the job. It's got good reviews, and uh, if you watch the video, you'll see it, it put a lot of torque down, and then uh, you know clicked as it's supposed to. So you may need an extension in order to torque it, but otherwise, uh, you don't need all these. You just need a 32 millimeter, a breaker bar, or an impact, and maybe a flashlight to help, and then a torque wrench to put it back on. And of course, I jacked the car up. You can probably get away with not jacking it up, but it made it easier for me. 
So uh, hopefully that helps guys. And that is part for that. It is a uh, 7L8Z2C182A. Put it in the description. Uh, again, I only found Ford to sell this part. I could not find it at all. in advance. I can only find ones for all wheel drive or the front. So good luck everybody. And let's get into the uh, actual work. All right, don't mind the mess. I've got a lot of jobs I've been finishing up before I clean up. So let's take a look at our new part here. If you notice that there is like a ridge between the turn ring and this hold down, it's because there's two different parts. So that actually allowed it to throw this piece. If they mold this from one, and maybe they didn't do it because the type of metal has to has to be or something, but that probably wouldn't have broken. But you know, we're in the rust belt here. It's gonna be a problem. So we're gonna have to replace this whole part. We did get this from Ford and the Ford part number is 7LAZ-2C182-A. Again, there might be a superseded part to this. This is in a Ford genuine part. It's all we could find. So we're gonna have to get that off. So next, I'm gonna take the car and set it back down on the ground so that the back wheel is touching. Is when I use that breaker bar because I, I have my air compressor back here. I'm doing housework and need a nail gun. Um, I'm going to need it on the ground so I can loosen it, the 32 millimeter nut. So I lower this down some and show you me taking it off. Hopefully it all comes out all right. It's all connected to the hub, so I am gonna be uh, aware of what's going on there but let's just see how it goes. All right guys, I was trying to do it by hand. It wasn't going very well. I do have an impact on I just didn't feel like grabbing it because it's, oh God, I'm all out of breath. The compressor is in the front yard. I'm using it for the nail gun to do uh, trim and stuff, but Thing my hand seemed like it was gonna to be too difficult. So I'm explaining some, uh, what is it? PB penetrating stuff. Hi guys, so uh, obviously I showed it, but I took that nut off, the 32 millimeter nut, using the impact 
it actually came out pretty easy with the impact. I did spray some PB Blaster in there. I pulled it off. Everything was clean in there. This actually goes up against the bearing. So I put the new part in. <clears throat> And I put my impact on the lowest setting. I'm going to torque this to spec. I actually bought a new torque wrench just to do this because uh, in the instructions it costs like 220 pounds or something. Because this is like essentially holding, it's almost like an axle nut. <clears throat> so I'm going to double check the specs on that. Make sure I have it uh, torqued to spec exactly as it calls for. Okay. So I'll tell you that in just a second. But uh, right now I just have it sitting on there. So, you know, keep that in mind that do not use the impact to just butt that in there because if you go full beans on it like this impact can do like probably 700 foot pounds of tightening uh you will cause the bearing to likely you know have premature failure so let me take the torque specs get my torque wrench out and we'll uh torque it to spec and see if we can get that light to go off all right guys hopefully you're still with me so again i'm gonna torque this to spec and make sure we're all good I will attach a picture I found of like a documentation if I can of where I saw it but it said it was 214 foot pounds uh, that this is supposed to be tightened to. It was really difficult to find anything on these that was for the front wheel drive only. Everything's all wheel drive, but uh, 214 foot pounds. So I've got my Lexavon. I just picked this up off eBay. Oh no, I'm sorry, eBay, Amazon. Set it to 215. Um, then I'm gonna tighten this down to. So let's get this torque to spec. And make sure we hear a click. Yep, see it's not there yet. Cause if it was, it would have clicked already because that impact is on low. 214 is a lot. It is a lot to do. Let's click it soon. There it is. That's torque to spec, baby. See, impact didn't ever do it. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so. Take a look at this. As I mentioned, you're supposed to have these keyways that go past the uh, sensor. Essentially, it's like a magnet. It reads the in and out. Uh, the other side back there uh, had it. This one was completely demolished. Let me grab it again. Completely gone. Something tells me the other side's going to go soon. The front will be different because that has a CV axle. If this was an all-wheel drive vehicle, it would be different. But seeing as how it's front-wheel drive only, the back just has a hub. There's no axle. Like, usually there'd be like a, a CV, uh, you know, a, Rear differential can actually see like a housing it would come through um, and it would send the power down but this is front wheel drive so it doesn't have that so uh, i'm going to do a quick test run on this make sure the light goes out and uh, hopefully we'll be good to go i don't think the sensor is damaged but um hopefully that was helpful guys now we're 214 foot pounds i actually have a lot of the weight off of the tire and if i had my lift open i would have used the lift but i have a truck on there he's on new brake lines and i'm tired of pushing it around so i didn't feel like moving it but let me test this out. Hopefully we're good to go. I gotta tell my guy, he definitely needs a battery because if it sits for two days, it's dead. So let's check out the inside. Alrighty. So we're gonna go for a quick test drive. The battery keeps dying on this. So the light is already off. However, um, in the other case, as soon as you would drive like 15 miles an hour, it would just come back on if you were to reset the battery. That's because the ABS is a constantly checking system. It's not like a check engine light where it gives you time. So I'm going to do a quick loop around my neighborhood, see if the light comes back on. I also never really broke the brakes in, so I'll probably do that. And see how she drives. The fact the ABS light hasn't come on yet tells me that it's working now. And again, it's an instantaneous check. As soon as it realizes there's a fault, code is thrown, everything's disabled. So, go for a little bit of a drive, make sure it's good. Test all the brakes. Yeah, everything feels good on this. So I'll be able to give this back to Mr. Paint Man. Mr. Paint Man. This guy recycles paint. Makes a good living from it. And uh, saves the environment some. But I'll keep doing my test drive. Make sure everything's good. I'll check in at the end and let you guys know how it went. Well, guys, that is it. I took it for a good test drive. We were... I drove around for about 10, 10 minutes. Um... You know, put a couple miles on it. The light didn't come back on. Everything was fine there. No weird noises, nothing like that. Um, it's important that you do torque that, uh, you know, nut down to spec so you don't, you know, overdo the bearing or anything as it as it drives around. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I'll, you know, 
Hopefully in the beginning of this video, I showed you all the tools you'll need so you're ready to go in there. I didn't even have a torque wrench I could do this until I bought one. I've been avoiding it, but now I've got it. So uh, thanks again, guys. If this video was helpful to you, be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, if the turn ring wasn't damaged, then I would be checking like the wiring and such. But this one was such an obvious issue that I stopped there. No reason to keep, you know, digging for issues when you found the obvious one. So thanks again, guys. Have a good time. And uh, depending on when I release this video, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See ya.